So, let's talk about Nuke Logic. Right now, we're an empty scene and I'm using the non-commercial version, which is more than enough for like 99% of the projects you'll do for personal use. Nuke is a node-based workflow, which means that every adjustment you make is non-destructive. If you change something later, everything updates automatically. In this empty scene, the only thing we have so far is the viewer. Now we can press tab and write read to read whatever the file you want to bring into the nuke. We can also type write and let's just put the create node inside just to well, with the help of write node, you just output the uh, either PNG, EXR sequences, or whatever it is you want. The .mov. The nuke isn't working really good with MP4 file formats. So now you can see that the resolution by default is set to something really weird and unusable, and once we bring in our footage if you press one you can see this in the viewer you, you can see your input in the viewer so now as you can see the colors aren't really what we are seeing in max so let's press s to open up the settings of the project you can see that in the empty space we now have the same resolution as our input file. So 1920 by 810. And now let's deal with the colors. So I'm gonna go ahead to the color tab and we need the ACES workflow. So we're gonna change the color management to OCIO and go to the new default, change it to ACES 1.2. And now we can see that our render is pretty much the same as what we had in 3ds max now you can see everything is adjusted to aces cg workflow so let me just clear this these notes out and i'm gonna bring the grade note or the color correction you just you can adjust whatever you want, it's pretty much the same as After Effects or whatever it is that you're used to use if you're not used to work in Nuke. So, yeah. There's masking, you can type whatever you want, like a Cryptomate if you need something for the masks. And you can just grab with the control any elements that you want, and that's about it. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the our render into the nuke and in the properties tab I'm gonna change the number from 10 to 1 and the reason for that is if it's set to 10 the overall amount of nodes that are visible in the properties are gonna be 10 nodes and it can impact the RAM usage and the CPU usage and a lot of different stuff so I'm trying to keep this low profile and setting that we only see the one node at a time so now I'm gonna bring in the sky texture that I just found somewhere on the internet you can press 2 to see the picture and because we're working in ACES we have to change the input transform from made paint, the default one, to either color picking the output as RGB or the other output output as RGB to have the same colors as it should be. Now I'm gonna I'm bringing the color correction node to correct those purple areas that I don't like. We have also the hue correct to correct the specific hues in the same 
so I'm removing the amount of blue in the purple areas and I'm trying to up a little bit the red and a lot of green to kind of counter the purpleness of it Now I'm gonna do crop and uh, reformat to match the sky aspect ratio to the scene aspect ratio. Then you can just play around with a regular transform node to move your sky around to match the position to whatever you want to, whatever you want it to be. And then we're gonna use the merge node to merge the sky and the foreground together. It's important to know that the merge node is doing A over B, so if you want the foreground to be at the foreground, you need to put this into input A and the background into the input B. Chef Shift plus X is switching the inputs of the merge node. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use another transform node as well as the merge to kind of have the duplicate of the sky and move it around a little bit to fill up the whole space because we need the sun to be at the center as our Seen scan, scan, uh, sun is. Then I'm gonna use the roto brush node to mask out the area and blend two pictures into the one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the fog, the basic fog, uh, based on the ZDEPS channel. And to do that I'm gonna use the same background that we have, the same sky that we have. I'm gonna blur it out real big, like 450 pixels of blurring. And then I'm gonna merge it over the ZDEPS mask. And as I mentioned earlier, the Nuke is working with the channels. So if you mess up your channel, it probably won't work and you're gonna try and wrap your head around why it isn't working and it's probably due to using the incorrect channels. So I'm putting this z depth into the RGB and the Alpha channel. Then I'm using the grade node and put it also into the RGBA so that because masking happening on the alpha based channel so we need the alpha in it. Then we can do a light wrap and it's gonna help blend the pixels at the edge of the render with the sky a little bit better but the important thing about it is not to overuse it because otherwise it's gonna look very fake and well unnatural then I'm gonna put the crop at the very end of the of our nuke script and also before that I'm gonna use the create node to kind of make the f stops two stops lower or have the exposure to create the vignetting effect on the edges and I'm gonna use the roto brush again with the blur node to make it less 
noticeable. This is pretty much covers the very, very rough and uh, very slap comb just to see what works and what isn't, especially with our Z-Depth fog applied on top of it to see the silhouetting, to see the lighting condition, to just to get the feeling of, of this scene.